Making a User Tool, Part 1, The Basics. This podcast is at the basic level. It requires no knowledge of Accordance Bible software, nor Hebrew or Greek. Accordance offers many ways to customize your study of the Bible, but none beats making your own user tool. It's a way of incorporating your own thoughts and study into Accordance for future reference, making it possible to store, search, and retrieve your work years, even decades down the road. This podcast is the first of several on user tools. We'll cover the basics today, leaving topics like user tool links and importing text for future podcasts. User tools can be used for many different tasks. Some people use them to collect their research and notes, particularly if these are not tied to a specific biblical passage. User tools are also great places to store different presentations, whether these are sermons, Bible studies, or lecture notes. If you have students with their own copies of Accordance or access to Accordance in a college lab, consider designing guided assignments, which will walk them through a series of readings and resources. Finally, this is a great way to import resources not currently available as Accordance modules, though we ask you not to use this feature as a way to circumvent copyright laws. Make sure the text is either in the public domain or that you've purchased it for yourself and intend it only for your personal use. Accordance allows users to construct two different kinds of modules. The first kind is a user tool, which works like a general tool with its browser and tool window and multiple search field. The second, a user note, is more like a reference tool and can be opened in a parallel pane to scroll along with the text. The location of these modules is shown here on the resource palette, but you'll find similar icons in the library window. There you can open them, amplify to them, and search them just like other modules in their respective categories. This podcast covers the basics of making a user tool. Helen Brown has constructed a sample tool for us. Included with every copy of Accordance, it's an excellent way to see just what is possible with this feature. You can open it under the user tool icon. This screenshot also shows a user tool's six searchable fields, titles, content, scripture, Greek, Hebrew, and Rosetta, which is used for transliteration. All writing and editing in a user tool happens in the edit window. Here we can also add titles and subtitles, create links to scripture and other material, and change font style and color. Clicking update or typing command S saves the changes and updates the tool. Once completed, user tools can also be combined with other texts and tools to make custom search all groups. And finally, we can upload our tools and share them with others on the Accordance Exchange. Here you'll also find other users' contributions for download. This is just another free service offered by Accordance Bible Software. The only thing we ask is for users to make sure their material is in the public domain or freely distributable for non-commercial purposes. Now let's make a user tool for ourselves in Accordance. Let's make a new user tool together. I'll go under my stuff on the resource palette and select new user tool and I think I'm going to call this one topical studies and the very first article that I wish to write is going to be on idolatry to type more text I can simply click and begin typing or I can type command U in this case I don't think that you want to sit here and watch my very slow and very poor typing So I've made some notes in advance and put them into a sticky. I'll just copy that and then paste the entire material into my user note like this and click update. You'll notice that it automatically updates in the tool itself, but I'm going to go back to the user edit window and let's shift some of these things around. Did you notice when I entered idolatry that it immediately entered a T for title? I have some other titles that I'd like here. I'll simply hold the option key, click once, and Hebrew Bible is now a subheading under idolatry. I'll click under law, but I'll click twice this time because I want the law, the prophets, and the writings to each be sub-subheadings. And by the way, if I click once too often, I can simply hold the shift key down and the option key and click it back. For New Testament, of course, I want this to be a major heading as well, and here my subheadings happen to be Jesus, Paul, and Peter. I'll click Update, and we'll open the browser in the tool window so that you can see that in fact I now have titles that are nested 
and give me the opportunity to click from place to place in my tool just like normal. At this point, I'm ready to do some more editing. I'd like the word idolatry to stand out a bit more, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in forest green. I'd like to make it much larger, so I'm going to put it in 18 point, and I'm going to put it in bold. Now you'll notice that all of that takes quite a bit of time. I'm far better off to hit Option, Command, 5, and call up the text palette, where I can conveniently do these things with a single click. So for example, in the Hebrew Bible, click, and it's bold. And the same thing for the Law, and the Prophets, and the Writings. Now I don't want to make this too unusual, but notice that I can change the color just as easily. Let's say I make that purple, and I want to make that italics, and I can do any of this kind of material just that fast. Now to add scripture links, all I have to do is to select the scriptures that I've already placed within here, and simply click Make Link, or use the shortcut Command-L, as in here and here. Notice that when I choose these, I very carefully do not choose the punctuation marks or the parentheses. I simply choose the scripture itself. Let's click Update and see what our tool looks like now. Ah, that's beginning to look better. I'll shrink the size just a bit so you get a feel for it. Notice here that when I cursor over Exodus 20, 31 or Deuteronomy 5, 6 through 9, that my hypertext links are already working. Let's go to the NRSV, where I've already searched for the word idle. If I cursor over the word idle and hold my command key down, I get my preferred dictionary. I can hold the shift key and then click this copy icon to copy that entire definition. I'm going to paste it into my topical studies here, where it says the Hebrew word is. And once I paste it in, all I've got to do is just a bit of formatting. Let me get rid of that. By the way, Hebrew text, which is how it pasted in here, works best about 18 points, where the rest of this works very nicely at about 12. Once again, I'll click Update, and you'll notice that already now I've got both Hebrew and Rosetta in my user tool. It's just as easy to add Greek, and I don't just have to add it from a text. So, for example, if I want to take the word idle in Revelation 9.20 and I want to amplify to nidden it, I can take this entire paragraph here, copy it, turn around and put it in my, in my study on idolatry right here, like so. And once again, I'll have to shrink that text just a bit. Tell accordance that I want it in 12 point. I'll click update. And there's my user tool. That's the way to develop a user tool, moving back and forth between the texts and the tools that you wish to copy, pasting, identifying the scriptures that you wish to use as hypertext links, and you wind up with a very, very nice user tool. So I can now search it. In fact, I can search it by any of the fields that are not grayed out. So if I want to search content, for example, for the English word the, Notice that it appears here, and I can move from mark to mark as I go up and down just like a regular tool. Making a user tool can be as easy as jotting down notes, or writing a paper, or as challenging as crafting a dissertation. Whatever level of difficulty you choose, know that Accordance allows you to include your own research and reflection among its modules, where it's ready for instant access anytime you need it. This has been Dr. J for Accordance Bible Software. Thank you for watching this episode of Lighting the Lamp.